Hello, it's Steve White here and welcome back to another Lo-Fi session. A few months ago, I put up a video featuring some of my old vintage Slingerland snare drums that uh, I've used on many a recording session over the years. I first got interested in classic vintage American snare drums way back around 1983, 1984 through a really good friend of mine called Harbin Shry, and I did buy quite a lot of drums. Slingerland Radio Kings have always had a very special place, but there are others. I think um, if you've seen the, the Louis Belson tribute that I did, um, you saw the Rogers Dynasonic wood shell that I have. But today I want to feature another of my favourites that I've used in the studio to great effect over the years. It's by a drum manufacturer by the name of George Way. Now, this is a little picture of George. Um, he was born in 1891 and died in 1969 and packed a hell of a lot into a very illustrious career. Not only an incredible designer manufacturer, George was a very accomplished player. He studied under the great George Lawrence Stone and uh, George Lawrence Stone, GL Stone, was the author of Stick Control and Accents and Rebounds and a very, very famed teacher. So he must have had some chops. He, he also went out and toured on the vaudeville circuit, played with some of the biggest artists of the day, and even done a stint in the Ringling Brothers and Barnum Circus, which uh, I'm sure was great fun. So yeah, the guy played. Once he began to show an interest in working on the other side of the industry, he got a job with the great Ulysses Leedy, the Leedy Drum Company, who in my opinion do make some of the most amazing vintage drums in terms of quality that you're ever likely to find. Over the years, George went on to work for Rogers, he went on to work for Slingerland, and eventually came to making his own drums. Now what I love about these drums, this being one of his uh, Black Diamond Pearl 14 by 5.5, is just the sheer quality, they are beautifully made. It's a ply shell drum, it's not a solid shell like the Slingerlands are, um, but it really does work in the studio. As I say, beautifully made, great quality, a lot of thought, a lot of invention, a lot of um, understanding about the nature of the instrument has gone into building these, and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. This one is, has a little stencil inside, say in 1960, and I believe it was bought from a drum shop in the Detroit area, which I'm not sure is actually there anymore. And really, th this would say that the drum was built around 1959, 1960. So it's 60 years old and it's in remarkable condition. One of the things that you might notice about the drum is the turret lug, which um, George Way came up with the original idea. They eventually went on to be featured on Camco Drums, another beautiful manufacturer and eventually probably recognisable as the iconic uh, lug design for DW, for Drum Workshop, which is still now round and about uh, today. So this is an actual George Way snare drum. And one of the interesting things, as well as the quality, is the fact that it's only six lugs, which I find really great for studio work. It's a very easy drum to tune, it's a very easy drum to, to prep, and has a very clean, um, overtoneless um, sound, very warm and very kind of fat for a plashel drum. So it's a real favourite for me in the studio. A real interesting fact is that uh, the great Ron Dunnett, um, who makes uh, drums under his own uh, illustrious name, has resurrected the George Way brand and is making some beautiful instruments with the uh, original George Way badge on. It's lovely to see that. I've seen recently that Rogers have been resurrected under the watchful eye, uh, originally I believe of Steve Maxwell, another great friend of mine and great, um, great knowledgeable um, person within the drum industry. I really love these people and I kind of put George Way in that kind of bracket. Um, a more modern example would be the much loved and missed Johnny Craviotto who's, uh, who became a friend of mine and I actually own a gorgeous Craviotto kit that Chad Smith bought me for my birthday in 2007, 2012-14 and Johnny signed it for me. And then of course you have um, you know Ron and you have the great Keith Keogh who um, as a 
as a, a, a great friend of mine, I used to share a, a rehearsal a facility with him when he was KD Drums in Stockport. And uh, obviously he went on to work for Premier and I got into my experiences of um, the ups and downs of being on the other side of the, uh, the fence when we worked for Premier, um, working on the modern classic drums. And it's great to see Keith doing so well at BDC. But I love these kind of characters, these kind of behind the scenes characters. And uh, so that's a little salute to, to Ron and to Keith and to George Way and obviously to Johnny Craviotto. I'm going to feature a Johnny Craviotto real limited special edition in this little uh, series of videos, a, a 14 by 7 maple solid shell that Johnny made for me um, when we were working on some of the premier stuff and it really is I think one of the most unique drums that I've ever had the pleasure of playing. So, George Way, um, there's a name, keep it in your mind. If you ever get a chance to, to buy one or to play one, please give it a go. So the main thing is you probably want to hear it. As I said, it's got quite a dry sound, quite overtoneless, um, really great for the studio. And as I say, really one of my very, very all time favorite snare drums. So thanks for listening and uh, watching and I will see you again very, very soon.